one. Good afternoon. This is a public hearing of the Chatham Conservation Commission being held on December 15th, 2021, in accordance with the Massachusetts mm -hmm. Wetlands Protection Act and the Town of Chatham Wetlands Protection Bylaw and Regulations. My name is Bob Rawls and I serve as the chair. Hearings are broadcast live on Channel 18 and also recorded for the on-demand archives available on the town's website. Please let me know if anyone else is recording this meeting. Work, um, today's hearing is being conducted via remote video conference, originally pursuant to the governor's emergency COVID order, and now under an order allowing remote public meetings through April 1st, 2022. The agenda and copies of documents for review today are posted on the town's website. To participants, after presentations by applicants and or the representatives, I will normally ask for comments and questions from commissioners, then from any interested parties. Please remain muted unless you are speaking. If you're attending via phone, mute using star six and use star six again to unmute. If you're on the Teams platform, indicate that you wish to speak by using the raise hand feature. If you're attending by phone, please unmute with star six and address the chair. When recognized, please identify yourself for the record. If you're not a commissioner and you're on the Teams platform, please keep your camera turned off unless you're speaking. The commission will vote on each matter by roll call so that we have a record of a quorum. I'll now ask each commissioner to indicate their presence. Vice Chair Bob Del Vecchio. Present. Janet Williams. Present. Karen Latin. Present. Mary Sullivan. Present. Associate Member Trina Francisconi. Present. Associate Member William Doherty. And William is not here, and I am here, so we do have a quorum. Nikki Smith, Chatham's conservation agent, will now lead us through today's agenda, including whether any items are being continued. I have not heard of any continuances. Um, I just did want to make a quick announcement while more people are on than not. Um, just a reminder that all of our meetings are at 1 p.m. from now on. Um, and um, that administrative reviews can be filed 100% online. So um, if engineers um, could start filing that way and you can contact Crystal if you need help uh, navigating that. Um, so with those quick announcements, we can move on to 21 Little Beach Road, uh, request for a field change. The Michaela Realty Trust, Kimberly A. Chipman, trustee, map 16A, parcel 21-H8, SE 10-3331, um, move previously approved wall mounted HVAC and generator to a safer and less prominent location. All right, that Alderman Chair. Well, that. Um, and I hope that the field change request came through because we had a number of other items that were were supposed to be listed in there. Uh, another yes. of I yes. uh, Okay, good, good. So I can go through all of those. Um, so the Chipmans would like to relocate the AC and the generator from the side of the building to the rear of the building. Uh, that'll be easier to access. With the previous filings, they determined what they want for a fence, but we didn't have those in the previous filings. Some sort of railing is required at the top of the wall. So there's a vinyl fence that's being proposed up there. Uh, it exceeds 30 inches and they have living space out there. There are three sets of stairs in the rear, uh, one coming off the wall down to Windmill Terrace, um, one coming off the deck onto the lawn, and then the one in the rear that was heading off to the southeast. They want to change all three of those. The one heading to Windmill will be rotated by 90 degrees. Uh, the one off the deck would be longer. Than, um, than what was approved. And the one to the south would turn back towards the driveway rather than pointing off towards the, the water. Um, we've increased coverage from the approved plan. We've proposed sufficient mitigation for it. 
it's granted it's on a property that's controlled by the same entities, but it's under a different name. So permission will be granted to allow for that. And that's about it. If there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. With that, I have a, I have a question. You, I just want to make sure I knew what you meant when you said you had additional items. What did you mean by that? Oh, just because Nikki said the AC and the generator, and I was afraid that it, the stair changes didn't come through. Yeah, I don't know if they did or didn't. I, I, I have in my notes that you're uh, changing two stairs, not three stairs, so I don't know if what I, what I have is the site plan dated um, mm, 12, um, updated December 1st. The, the cover letter referred to two stair changes, the two staircases, but not the expansion of the stairs on the deck that right. I could remember. Okay, we can. We're not before zoning until January. We can continue this for a, a complete letter. If that's um, wish. It, uh, does or do you, so do you have a different? Is it that you have a cover letter that you, that we didn't receive, or is this cover letter simply didn't mention the third one, the third stairs? I don't believe we mentioned the third stairs. I'm okay. So what we what we have is what you have. Okay. Uh, anything else that's different from the cover letter or anything different than what is described in the cover letter? Because uh, in there. I think we missed the fence as well. Yeah, uh, I don't remember a fence been, being mentioned. There's there's a um, plan that was dated December 6th that was just submitted today. Um, oh. We were not given all the information when we prepared everything and then tried to catch up with things. So, well, like I said, if we continue this off for a month, it's not going to change anything. Okay. And then we can have a complete application for you to review. What is that uh, noise? <laughs> Someone's doing some collating and stapling and folding. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> so, the question is whether we discuss what we have before us or, or continue altogether. And um, and if there are questions, um, I mean, I think we should discuss a little bit just to make sure that the mitigation seems like it would be OK. Um, right, right. We can talk about the mitigation so that no changes are again asked for at the next hearing. Right. Um, so and is, I did have a question. Is the address for the mitigation 14 windmill? I believe it's a zero for the address. It's an it's a strip of land that Peter Chipman owns. Okay, if you could just yeah get me the exact map and parcel for that, just so I can um, include it in uh, the potential field change okay letter. I don't think that was mentioned as well in the materials that I saw. Even on the map, I couldn't tell what the address was for the where the mitigation was. Um, all right. So since I'm talking, I, I'll just I'll just the, the mitigation, the cover letter says the mitigation will be on an adjacent property. However, I was confused in that the site plan appears to show the 21 bayberries on the on the subject property. So I couldn't oh. figure that out. No, those are bayberries that are going to be going in as part of landscaping. We wanted to be able to maintain those so they weren't counted towards mitigation. Oh, they're not. Naturalized. Oh, OK. So the mitigation area is it's a green wavy yeah. lined. Uh, feature it'll go up against 14. Right, so the parents and they berries are not part of the mitigation that wasn't clear to me. Yeah, and we'll do our best to find an address. We might have to go to the assessor. It's not on the town's map. Okay. <laughs> it's unusual. It's just a little strip of a parcel that was sorted out recently and. 
Um, okay. But there is a there is a house on that property, and there's a, 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 someone living there. No, no, there's a house on 21. The strip of land where that wavy line is, you can see it's a 10, 12 foot wide strip of land. Uh -huh. That's just a strip a of land. Of land. Yeah, it's... Oh, okay, I get it now. All right, so that strip is just actually just a strip of land. That's it. Mm. Owned by the same owner who uh, for 21 Little Beach. Yeah, I mean, 21 Little Beach is in the Michaela Realty Trust with Kimberly Chipman as the trustee. And then that strip is owned by Peter Chipman. And, huh. and actually looking at the assessor's database, they have it as zero Little Beach Road, even though the frontage is not there. So we'll get that information added to it just to be complete. Okay. So, okay, that, that changes what I was, the, the, the tack that I was going to take a little bit. So, um, so there's 380 square feet of proposed mitigation in that strip? Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't have written down what the mitigation consists of. Bayberries. The bayberries are what I think are not part of the mitigation. I assume they had been when I saw that planting list. Or are all is an additional 21 bayberries in the strip? There would be an additional 21 in the oh, strip. Oh, oh, it's two two groups of 21. Okay, wow. All right. Well, and we weren't really yeah, we, we took those kind of out of the equation because that's you know planting. Originally we had proposed beach plum there and that should be a field change as well. Um, this is we we are in phase one here, aren't we? Of this field change request. I is thought it was really amended that you have a phase one and two, and a field change is just a field change. Oh, I got it. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. All right. So, okay. Now that now that I understand what's happening, I guess the one or two questions that I had still apply, which is. Typically with mitigation, we like to see a little more diversity, mm -hmm. especially if it's if what we're talking about are 21 little bayberries. Um, and that would be that was the first thing that occurred to me when I saw this. The other thing that occurred to me is that this is for mitigation proposed for the adjacent property. And you know, I was trying to think about the way this could get confusing, more confusing later, and that is that that strip were, for example, sold. Mm -hmm. And then you have you have someone else responsible for the mitigation for the other property that they have no association with. So it just potentially could get confusing. I can't actually recall, and Janet, maybe you can recall, I don't, uh, a similar situation where we um, had mitigation for a property be on another property, whether or not it was owned by someone else. Right. No. It, so um, it'll be it'll be a little confusing when the um, COC comes up for this property because it's got mitigation on. I, I understand it's a related, if not the same owner, but it's a different parcel. Um, I don't, Nikki, does that? Does that present any complications to you? Um, it can, since we're not amending the order to include this parcel. Um, but in this case, the likelihood that anyone would sell or purchase this strip of land <laughs> since you can't do anything with it is so minimal that I'm mm -hmm. being the most I could think of is that one of the neighbors would absorb it into their own property. Um, uh -huh. So I'm but, sorry. So I wasn't following that. So that strip is is independently, yeah, idle. It's not part of. Yeah, it looks like it's an un unbuildable parcel. So yeah, um, I don't see why the neighbors would want to buy it and add to their tax bill um, because they would have more <laughs> land, and I don't see why anyone would purchase it just on their own outside of you know those that <laughs> circle of three houses because well a croquet court a, a croquet court, <laughs> a bocce ball court yeah <laughs> so i mean 
so I could I see the complications that could arise in the, that kind of situation, but with this particular parcel, I don't think it, it is likely to arise. And, and if they got rid of the vegetation, they would, you know, have to get an order of conditions and hopefully the research would show that that was a mitigation area um, before they did, before anybody did purchase it and remove vegetation there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's unlikely that it's going to separate out. And when so we anyway, looking at this, when we had an expansion of the coverage, we looked at the subject property of what meaningful mitigation could be added here. Uh, it's not contiguous to any naturalized area. You know, we could put a pocket in the front yard, but what real good would that do? This is continuing some, some vegetated area that's on 14, and it actually gets into the 50 to 100 foot zone. So it, it's more meaningful mitigation than it would be if we kept it on the subject property. Uh, yes, I, I agree with that. I agree too. But we can add some beach plums into it, mix it about half and half, and that way. That would be better. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody else? Uh, I'll just open it up. I, my only, my only, you know, those are my only two concerns. So anybody else? Bob. Yeah, I just had a concern about the long-term care of this area. Um, it would have to be uh, demarcated pretty well um, so that no one intruded through it, you know. That would be my only concern. Mm -hmm. Heck, you might as well just do the whole strip, that, and that way it'd make it easier to demarcate it. Yeah, but if he ever wants to use that as a path to get out to the beach, he's going to... Uh going to have to go through mitigation area. Mm, um, oh, well, let me see. Where's also, if you ever want to use it as a path, he's back before you, he's back to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but that's oh. pretty much the only thing that this strip is good for. A path horizontally through it or vertically through it? In other words, oh, through yeah. the narrow? <laughs> through the narrow. The narrow, yeah. So, I mean, you could just leave a path at the get-go. Anyway, just a random thought. Is, 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 can I ask a question? Is that so what I'm looking at that is, are you saying then roughly half, give or take, of this strip is proposed for mitigation and the other half, more or less, will be, could be still utilized as a path? It could be. I see, because I'm seeing that line running down, not sharing, so you can't see that I'm pointing to it, but that's what we're looking at, right? Right. It's basically a straight line from one end to the other. And, and it's existing lawn there now. So I thought there was existing, I thought there was existing uh, shrubbery and uh, to the east, there's existing shrubbery. Okay, so the mitigation is up against the existing shrubbery. It is. Leaving the path. Okay, I get it. Yeah. And if he wants to return to put a path in someday, he can and otherwise it'll stay the way it is. Well, I do. I do echo Bob's concern about demarcating it because it's a long, skinny strip, and mm -hmm. you know it's easy to forget the fact that it's actually it was originally proposed as mitigation, offered as mitigation, and easily overtaken, stepped on, forgotten about. Which would lead one might lead one back to thinking that mitigation of the subject property is more easily. Uh, taken care of instead of a basically a piece of property that's an orphan. Are you saying there's no room in the subject property? No, what? Yeah, all right, no, no, no. I, I mean, you know. Oh, it's, um, <laughs> the subject property is not contiguous to any naturalized area. Yeah, yeah. It was all basically law and there was some privet hedge out there once upon a time there, you know, it's what value would a pocket of mitigation be on the subject property when we can add to a fairly naturalized area 
And I believe Blue Flox just did a, a land management on the adjacent property. So now, I mean, and this is also within the buffer of Coastal Dune, which it, um, it just seemed more meaningful to put it over here. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I, get, I get the point. Uh, but, so what is the, the vegetation that it is adjacent to is, is mitigation for the other property? Uh, that was just vegetation that had existed there over time. It was- It's just stuff, okay. Yeah, and the adjacent yeah. property, they went in with a voluntary land management plan. So no mitigation over there. Right, but nevertheless, it's a native, native, I assume it's native vegetation. I believe so. Okay. Well, I guess the question still remains, how do we protect it? And um, does it need protecting? And if so, how do we protect it? And that. I mean, we prefer not to put a fence out there, but putting some form of demarcation is certainly acceptable. Mm -hmm. Little boulders or posts in yes. the ground that, that are low. Right. For what those are worth, I mean, I, I, I envision 10 years, 20 years from now, someone looking at those and go, what the heck is that doing? They're picking up and throwing it away. But uh, it's always, uh, to me, to me, it's always seemed of really a little value over the long term. Um, so I anyway, who else has who else has uh, questions about this? Anybody have opinions uh, who hasn't spoken about whether or not this is the, the right way to go with mitigation for this proposal? Some sort of sort of conflicted. Janet, you have your physical hand up. You are muted. You are muted. <laughs> I think that the location of the mitigation is appropriate given given how developed the lot is and that this area is not only adjacent to other vegetated areas but if if memory serves me right this is this is part of the of the flood pathway that we looked at at little beach and so any you know any additional planting in that area where the floodwaters are predicted to to rise and come um, would be a helpful a helpful thing to uh, to slow them down, prevent, you know, so, soak up whatever, all the things that vegetation does. So mm -hmm. demarcation, I don't know, we had this, we had this discussion every time. Um, we do. Because we do. <laughs> we do. Um, yeah. I would say given, you know, these are going to be little, little bayberries and little uh, beach plums are not going to be big. So maybe just the metal strip along them to prevent if that area is lawn and it's used for a pathway it will be mowed so to keep the mowers out and then hope that you know doing that they'll get a chance to grow large enough that they will uh, not be a target for somebody yeah yeah that's a good idea a um what, what do we call it the uh, type of type of it's uh, what do we call this, Bob? The the type Bob of Bob has it. He knows. Yeah. Yeah, okay. metal edging or something. Metal like. edging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, I was just going to say maybe some signage, maybe a small sign at either end or something, uh, identifying it as uh, you know mitigation for the subject property twenty one. Would wouldn't hurt. Sure. It would help a lot, I think especially if it's something that would uh, last for a while. Okay, we can certainly add those. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything else about this, about the, the general approach? Okay, so I think you have, um, you have the comments that I guess we'll continue it for you to make those changes and you're talking about in January. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I believe January, I have it up. Um January 12th, I believe. Yes, January 12th. 
All right, we'll be better prepared. <laughs> Bob is going to lead us into a motion. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to continue 21 Little Beach Road until January 12th, 2022. Latin second. Roll call vote, Bob. Aye. Janet. Aye. Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you and happy holidays. Yeah, you too. All right, now we're going into our notice of intent. Um, 20 Jericho Lane, Mark Leibovitz, manager, map 10B, parcel B12, or B2, sorry. SE 10-3525, construction of a pool. And I believe the only new information we got was a um, revised blue flex plan, which I'm putting up in just a second. Yeah, good afternoon, Bill Riley, on behalf of uh, the owners of 20 Jericho. Hello, Bill. Uh, I believe Dave Clark is here as well. I am here. There you go. All right, so the uh, in our last meeting, uh, we all realized that uh, some trees uh, that were over, as you look at the house from the water, on the right-hand side where we now propose to put a pool, uh, had been removed without a prior discussion uh, with uh, the commission. And so uh, we had Teresa modify her plan so that uh, now on the left side, where we previously proposed, I can't remember, it's either two or three, we're now proposing uh, a total of <clears throat> seven trees uh, with the intent of replacing the ones that have been improperly removed uh, from the area where we now propose to put the pool in, in the patio. And that's the those are the that's the one change then. Well, there is another minor change. <laughs> we have a uh, we're going to the zoning board to move the, the pier from one side of the property to the other. Uh, Dave can explain the environmental advantages of what we're proposing, but we we asked Teresa to show a path through the mitigation. Uh, so we'd be able to get down to where the, the new location for the pier is going to be. And that's that clear space uh, you can see in Teresa's plan. Uh, David Clark here. So if you want me to talk about the sh moving of the pier, I'd be happy to. Uh, but as Bill said, it, it, it's a little four foot wide path to allow access to where we anticipate getting approval to move the pier to. And obviously uh, we'll be back before you with a notice of intent for that project. And it will also, that that project will also include uh, removal of the old uh, at grade steps and restoration of that area. Um, so you will see that on the next notice of intent. Okay, that was totally lost on me that that was part of the, uh change yeah so so really it, uh, um teresa i i requested teresa to, to to put a little gap in the mitigation plantings um rather than having it planted now and then possibly coming back before you and asking to to remove some of it so right right yeah um, i see the i see the path there's just no there's just no description of yeah of the change. Oh, it's, it's just a gap in the in the mitigation planning. The plan notes say they added four service berries and three uh, three shrubs of some kind. Yeah. Oh, Teresa's okay, so. blue, blue flex design is here to answer any questions. But yes, we added three BA berry and four amelink years um, along the south um, western property boundary. Now, one thing, okay, Teresa, now that you're on, one thing that mm -hmm. did confuse me is I believe that, well, I know the previous planting plan was on top of the site plan. 
Yes, I did just recognize that. So David had kindly sent over his draft peer plan so that we would have the location for the new peers so we could add the path. And it looks like that was brought in and not removed. <laughs> so um, this plan, as I'm looking at it, is not showing the existing trees or the proposed pool. It's just basically um, showing the mitigation planting that we're proposing for that work. So I can I completely understand your confusion on that, and I apologize. I, David had sent us over the CAD file, so we would have the approximate location of the new proposed pier in the future, so we could leave that gap and our planting open for a proposed path in the future. And it looks like the plans were not switched over. So my apologies on that. Right. And similarly, I hope that when you change that, you'll have the resource lines. Correct. We yeah. will have that the resource area delineation. So if you if you if, with our previous plan, the only change we made here was to add those um, four amelanch years and the three bayberries, and um, and so we will put the the previous plan showing the pool and the trees back onto this. I, again, I, I apologize for that. So the the amount of room taken up by the new path through the mitigation is made up for by a additional area of mitigation? That's correct, exactly. And then to add to what David was saying in my discussion with David, obviously when he brings forward the filing for the pier, we will then be restoring the area where the at-grade stairs and the ramp are located um, to the north right. um, of, the, of our proposed mitigation area as well, so that there will be a mitigation for that. I, I, the goal here was just to as David pointed out, not plant an area and then come back to you and ask for us to remove those plants. We're just oh, being sure. proactive. Right. So that area will be seeded. It will be covered. There's existing um, Cape Cod lawn in that area with really great native grasses. Once the mowing stops, regular mowing is just taking place in that area. Once that stops, that will fill in beautifully um, with the grasses. And then in addition to that, we're proposing to overseed with our um, grass and wildflower mix. Okay, now that uh, I think we're, at least I'm up to speed, I'll, I'll open it up for questions from commissioners. Uh, this is Nikki. My only question, I'm just comparing the two plans. Um, I just want to, I guess, have you double check the numbers. Um, both plans say 1880 square feet. Um, it looks like you, I mean, obviously you added the ones, but you got rid of a winterberry and um, looks like maybe two fragrant sumacs. So I think, I think it's just, it's a number thing. I was trying to calculate it this morning and it wasn't adding up quite. Okay, I, I'll so. definitely double check that because those shrubs yeah. should have just been shifted to another location. They shouldn't have been removed from the plan. So the shrubs that we had to open up for the pathway should have been moved to another location. So I will double check that. Okay. And make sure that that's at correct on the plan. Okay, yeah. That's we the we were trying our best to turn this around in less than a week. So my apologies oh, on no, that. I, I did realize it had been continued to this week. So I, I'm sorry. Okay, Janet. I was actually going to ask the same thing, trying to figure out whether whether the numbers in the mitigation had changed as a result of remove of removing what was in that. It, and I have to apologize. It took me just until about 30 seconds ago to find the path because um, I was looking <laughs> over in the tree. And so I was in the wrong place. Um, but now I see it. So, OK, and Teresa just answered it by saying they've just moved plantings. They haven't reduced or added anything on account to account for the path, but you'll double check that. That's correct. We haven't we haven't reduced the number of shrubs that we were proposing previously. We've only added additional shrubs. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I did not label the path simply because right now it's technically not a path until the pier right. is proposed. So my yeah, I can see that's the fine. Got it. Got it. Um, just as we just said though before, when we're dealing with paths contiguous to or through mitigation areas, demarcation will be important um, to make Absolutely. sure that um, it doesn't encroach on the mitigation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's all I had. Um, 
Uh, Bob. Uh, okay, uh, Teresa, the, uh, uh, I asked about the, uh, that um, kind of a, a natural area uh, right near the pool um, above the uh, current uh, stair treads that are growing, uh, that are installed in the, um, where the grasses are. And did you have a, happen to take a look at that area? I did. I was actually just out there um, yesterday morning with my arborist because I was looking to, uh, we were examining the oak trees just to make sure that they were in good health. Um, I did not see any bittersweet, Bob, but certainly if there is bittersweet on the site, when we're doing our management, we would treat it at that time. But I, you know, the one thing about this site that's actually quite nice. It's, it's been managed quite well. Um, as you could probably see, the oak trees had been managed and and really with good management practices in the past. Um, and the area has been regularly mown, except for that area, as you're pointing out, kind of on the north um, east side of the property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did not see any bittersweet in there. There is green briar in there, but it's not overwhelming the area. And it's it's because it hasn't been a regularly disturbed area. It's, it's sort of um, playing nice with the surrounding vegetation, which is mainly bayberry, um, yeah. along with oak trees. Okay, fine. Um, okay, and the other thing was um, at the 50, uh, at that line, which which goes up towards the house, um, you know, right after the mitigation, um, can we demarcate that area, that line? Uh, because that's kind of, like you say, it's kind of a natural area. It's kind of nice grasses in there. Can we put like boulders across there so no one encroaches that whole area? Where is that again, Bob? It's at the 50 uh, no disturb zone line. Uh, so see where that little box is in the center there? Uh, do you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see that. That's, yeah. kind of, that's kind of where the 50 line is. Um, so it's kind of like, undis uh, it's not disturbed from there all the way to the water. And I was wondering if we could put some boulders there or something across that whole area, just, just so, so no one encroaches in that area. Uh, I, I can talk to, uh, I can talk to the applicant about that. I mean, the, the, um, uh, but I, I guess, I guess what, what form of encroachment are you concerned about? I mean, I, based on my visit to the site, uh, you know, it's, fairly steep and unlikely to be used for anything. You know, it's not like the kids are going to be out there playing baseball or anything. Right. Um, well, even if we just had something, you know, sporadically along that whole section there, that whole line, um, it would uh, help, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll speak with uh, the applicant and then uh, We'll test uh, Teresa's uh, flexibility and, and creativity to come up with something that keeps everybody happy. Okay, thank you. That's yeah, all. It's just a good way to keep that. people from, you know, clear cutting or pruning, you know, topping any vegetation, you know, say the house sells. Um, so that's really the only purpose of it is to kind of draw attention to, oh, there's a line of fence or a line of boulders here. What does that mean? Um, and hopefully no, I, they would. I, no, I understand that. And, and we were assuming that we'd, we'd be doing something to demarcate the mitigation area, uh, which is you know considerably down the hill. So uh, I mean, moving it that far up the hill is just something I have to discuss with the applicant. That's all, I mean, it's not a question of, uh, want to invite people in to damage things. It's just a question of uh, where the line was going to be, that's all. Okay, okay understandable. Bob, I, yeah, just discuss and I, it sounds like we're continuing to January anyway, so. Right. Bob, I think it's a, it's a great idea just to ask everybody to demarcate the NDZ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. It would definitely help. 
Yeah, that's that's actually a great idea. It sounds like it's something for the regulations group, subgroup. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the uh, uh, it's a do not disturb zone. It's not a do not walk zone. So I mean, you know. No, that's true. It, it's basically just to keep the mowers out, which you know the mowers don't. I know, no, and and yeah. you know we, you know, as somebody who represents applicants before you, I agree with the philosophy of keeping the landscapers out of the area. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just a question of balancing, you know, uh, sort of freedom of use and uh, protection. And I'll, I'll, as I say, yeah. I'll, I'll just talk about it with uh, with the client and and uh, I'll discuss it with Teresa as well. Okay, thanks. I I um I have one more follow up question. That is the Teresa, do you know? Do we do we know the number and size and type of trees that were removed? My understanding is that the trees that were removed were pitch pines. I, I'm not familiar with the with what was there previously. I apologize. I, I don't know. I do know that there are a number of pitch pines and oaks um, existing on the site. There are um, they are located on the plan that David submitted and that we had previously submitted, but they're not showing on this plan. And those trees are probably in the six to 10 inch caliper range, but I don't know about the trees that were up closer to the construction area of the house. Mm -hmm. um, um, my understanding I, is three trees were removed. Three. Yeah, okay. my, yeah my memory is that uh, uh, they weren't small, uh, but they weren't, uh, you know, like 45 footers that are 10 or 12 inches in diameter or, or caliper. Yeah. So they were, you know, maybe 15 or 20 feet or, or, or 25 feet and, you know, six or eight inches or something like that. Yeah, I but, mean, they're medium, medium sized pitch pines, three of them apparently removed and we're planting four service berries uh, essentially to replace them. So, you know, I'm just thinking about the math there. It, it's uh, not exactly, the, the scale doesn't exactly balance. Well, if I could. If, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, Commissioner Rawls, I just want to add that the reason that we chose these particular trees is because as you get further um, seaward on the site, down that slope to the 50 foot buffer in the top of the coastal bank, there are a number of existing um, oak and pitch pines in that area. So it's, once those are leafed out, it's quite shady. Um, and and really, there's a number of oaks that are in that area that um, Commissioner Del Vecchio had asked us to um, protect um, on the northeast side of the property. On the western side of the property, the southwestern, or I'm sorry, the southeastern side of the property, there are also a number of large pitch pines and small oak saplings. So we're basically adding the um, amelanchiers in there there is understory trees. Um, so my concern is trying to shoehorn in um, larger trees on this site would be challenging because of the number of existing healthy canopy trees that are already located in the buffer zone. No, I agree. There, there are a lot of fine trees down 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 the hill. Mm -hmm. And um, however, just talking you know, as a general rule, we have a situation where three trees are removed. You might you might say that that was a that was a violation that occurred and we are now, you know, trying to sort of fix it without issuing a violation. And had we issued a violation, what would we have, what would we have done? Would we have, what would we have required? And are we, are, is the applicant uh, having to make up for it uh, to a lesser extent uh, by, by handling it in this uh, NOI versus what we would have done before? That's, those are the things that are going through my head. Uh, four service bears for three medium-sized pitch pines. I know it's a crowded lot. I know you have a lot of trees already. Nevertheless, I still think that the the balance, the ecological balance, is not. The books aren't balancing for what was removed versus what we're planning. As, uh, no, I don't know exactly how you would fix that, but well, I know. But the, um, Bob, with all due respect, I mean, I think the the, the uh, quality of of uh, food source and habitat. Uh, for what Teresa is proposing is superior to um, the pitch pines that were removed, which were in close proximity 
uh, to the residents. And, uh, and these are further away and well likely to provide, you know, uh, habitat and food supply. So it's, it's not just uh, biomass, it's value of the trees as well. Um, David Clark here. Um, after the last meeting, I did go back and look at um, uh, our plan and Andrew's plan, and uh, and and at the previous meeting, Andrew was being very forthright with the commission in that uh, his uh, understanding of the last meeting that we had with the commission on the the main house when that was getting permitted was that the commission asked him if he could tighten up the work limit, which would which on his plan moved the work limit um, to the upland side of those three trees. Uh, for some reason, either I wasn't paying attention at the meeting, um, but my plan was never changed. Um, and the work limit stayed where it was originally staked for the construction process. So uh, the contractors really don't look at Andrew's plan until the house is well underway and um, and they start doing the uh, start installing the landscaping. So they, they they used the Clark Engineering site plan to do the demolition and site excavation work and and followed the work limit that was our on our plan and what was staked in the field uh, at the time of uh, demolition. Yeah. Well, yeah. It may have been unintentional, and I'm totally totally. It could very well have been that. It's not not really the issue. The issue to me is just making sure that we uh, mitigate that properly. Um, and I don't know what to do about it. I I think it's not quite there. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Am I the only one? Janet, you're muted. You are not the only one. Okay. Um, I do think a two to one uh, ratio is appropriate in this situation, considering um, the size of what was removed and what was lost. Um, I'm looking at Andrew's plan and the landscaping. I mean, I, I can't see there's the 50 there. There's a large lawn area just to the west of the house um, that strikes me as a, as a place to put um, maybe some some large um, native species of trees there, not necessarily large at this point, but you know, white oaks or something like that in that area um, to take up some of the, uh, to replace some of the value that's been lost. Um, I don't I don't know how you quantify the value of three pitch pines, but no, the- Pitch pines I then. I don't see them, like candidly, I just don't see them as being particularly valuable, but the, the uh, in my conversations with the applicant and the, uh, the building company, uh, they said if if uh, additional trees were required, they'd rather put them on the east side of the house, up between the garage and the property line. Where where's the? Uh... Well, okay, I see up there. Is there is that? There's. No, I mean, my until I walked down this hill, this whole top of the air of the site where the house pretty much from the 50 foot on up to the roadway has been completely cleared. So there's nothing there, but I see what you're saying. There's a, another large lawn area to the east side where some trees could go. Right. Yep. So I'll, I'll discuss it with the applicant and with Teresa and we'll come back with a, let's, we'll resubmit the plan. Hopefully we can still get this thing through the, uh, to the work session in January so that we can get in order of conditions. Hey, thanks, Bill. Anything else from anyone? Is that a, there's a hand up in the... Can't tell. I, I thought there was a hand up, but I don't see it at the moment. Uh, that, that was... That was me, David Clark. That was you. Okay, it was it was just buried in a, in a in a group of. Okay, I see. All right. Um, so I guess we have what we have. Um, you will need. We, I guess you want to continue to the next work session. Yeah, we'll we'll submit a revised 
Uh, Teresa will submit a revised. I'm sorry, next, next, next hearing, I mean. The. Uh, so it yeah, sounds like Bill wants to go to the 5th, and I'm kind of leaning towards the 12th um, to be at the, whatever the first work session in February is. Um, well, um, uh, Nikki, I think the the only thing that's required at this point is, is uh, Teresa has to put her plan on, on the, uh, or her work on the site plan, and we have to add some trees uh, along the east side of the property, all of which can be done uh, long before the, the, Jan the January 5th meeting. Let me see. So, I mean, we'd like to keep this thing yeah. moving. Well. I mean, we have two weeks of no meeting, so I can handle it being on the 5th for an order. Um, if you get your your stuff in, you know, next week though, so that's up to uh, Teresa. That's correct. We can make that deadline. Yes. Okay. So we'll get the corrected plan and show any additional trees uh, next week. Janet. Yeah, just just pointing out that's that's fine so long as you, they you understand that you're taking the risk that the commission isn't satisfied when they see the revised uh, plans. Right, which is why I was kind of leaning towards we'll the We'll have to 12. approve the plan before we can vote on an order of conditions. Right, I understand. Okay. I have complete faith in Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> As do we all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a heavy no burden being Teresa, that's for sure. All right, so we're talking the fourth? Fifth. Fifth, okay, fifth. Yeah, fifth. But we'll have it in. Uh, Teresa will have her revised plan in, which is be located on the, uh, the plan showing all the work, pool and all that, and the additional trees next week. Oh, we'll have that submitted to you by Tuesday next week. Perfect, thank you. All right. I guess one question, Bob, if I could. Sure. Uh, and Bill, you're gonna talk to the homeowner about the uh, about the boulders or such, or we just yeah. on what we were talking about too, right? Yes, I will. Thank you. Are we ready for a motion? Yeah, I believe we are. Okay, so um, let's make a motion to. Uh, uh, close the hearing and uh, bring 20 Jericho Lane. No, we're not. I don't oh, think no. we're closing. We're not going to close it. Okay. No. All right. Revise that. I make a motion to uh, send uh, 20 Jericho Lane to the work session uh, for an order of conditions on February 5th, 2022. January. It January 5th. Oh, January. January 5th. Okay, let me let me try it three times. Three times. Three times the charm. <laughs> so, I'd like to make a motion that we send uh, 20 Jericho Lane to the work session for an order of conditions on January 5th, 2022. Latin second. Roll call vote. Bob. Aye. Janet. Aye. Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you on the fifth. The next notice of intent is uh, 33 Wood Carver, Carver Knoll, Russell and Teresa Golden, map 11D, parcel 33, SE 10 3526, addition to the existing dwelling. And um, I assume David Little's here somewhere. Uh, Russ Holden. Oh, Russ. Hi. Hi, Nikki. <clears throat> this is Russ Holden from Ryder and Wilcox. <clears throat> and I believe that Nancy Bouton, who is the job supervisor, might even be in attendance. If so, she can answer construction questions. 
The project consists of constructing an addition off the northwest corner of the dwelling. The addition includes a foyer and covered entrance with a removal of the existing entrance steps. Also, the existing entrance on the deck shall be removed, eliminating the existing blue stone pavers and wood steps that are present. Also proposes the expansion of the shell driveway in width. Construction of the additions is within the 50 to 100 foot buffers with a portion of the driveway expansion occurring within the zero to 50 foot buffers. There's a total increase in coverage of 189 square feet, 18 square feet within the zero to 50 and 171 within the 50 to 100. 225 square feet of mitigation is proposed. The proposed addition will, will consolidate two existing entrances into one, creating better flow into the existing dwelling. The expansion of the shell drive will better facilitate the parking of two vehicles. The resource area is the top of Coastal Bank as delineated by where the slope intersecting the 100 year flood zone becomes less than four to one. Woodcarver Knoll, a paved road lies between the subject property and the top of Coastal Bank and the bank is heavily vegetated and rises approximately 30 feet above the marsh. All new construction is occurring within areas that are presently disturbed. The project activities will have, an, uh, will have, no, ad, ad, will have no adverse impact on wildlife habitat nor will wildlife movement within and between the resource areas be disturbed. And I open it up for questions. All right, thank you, Russ. Uh, I've been hogging the microphone, so I'm just going to op open it up myself. Bob. Um, I had a question about the mitigation planting. Um, and I, I see on the plan the way the mitigation kind of sticks out, uh, kind of like at a point uh, closest to the street. And I'm wondering whether that mitigation could be pulled in and wrapped around the existing plantings bed. Instead. I don't see why I don't see why not. Yes. Because right, right now it seems like a, a maintenance headache, uh, you know, to bring the mower all the way around there. Um, does it make really any sense or aesthetically, I, I don't think it makes sense either. Uh, but if it's brought around uh, to kind of end at the building where the, um, the old existing pavers are that mm -hmm. are going to be removed, I think that would make more sense. We, we could swing an arc from there so it would go around and end up around. You see where the 30 foot contour is? Going uh, through yes. the basin, we would be yeah. about 10 feet up from that. So the arc would swing around and curve into that. That would probably make a lot more sense. Yes. Okay. So just so I'm clear, we're talking about kind of cutting this corner off and moving it up here. Yeah. I don't know if yes. you can see my pointer. Yes. Okay. Yes. What yes. I would do is I would I'd revise this and get you a fresh copy, Nikki. Okay. So what would happen is where the field stone, there's an existing edge of plantings uh, that goes a little bit beyond the field stone wall that's there. So right. we, would, we would extend that and have a nice curved arc coming around and get rid of that point. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, anyway. we can do that. Hey, that's it, might all. it might increase the uh, square footage a wee bit too. Even better. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, I... And then, uh, Russ, I know that a new plan was dropped off for zoning that had the coverage calcs in here. Um, yes. So if you could just, when you, I mean, I assume when you at, change the plantings, that will be on here just so that we all have the same plan. Exactly. Yes. And I would prefer it in the, the color. I always like the color. <laughs> okay. Say that, Bob. Sounds like it. Anyone else? That's it. The only thing I had was I think, Russ, you just 
were saying you just I thought I heard you say it was a total increase of 189. I think the the document that I was looking at said a total increase in 171. So just take a look uh, my at math. You. My math was incorrect originally. This one 171 was the uh, 50 to 100, and then there's 18 more okay. on top of that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Just one you. Just normalize all your numbers when you revise it, and it should be good. I, I think on the um, on the NOI form that is submitted that shows the coverage calcs, that's correct. Yes. That shows the right number. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else from anyone? I think it's um, relatively straightforward. Is this is this? Remind me, is this the property? And I, I wrote it down, and it, but it doesn't jibe with my memory. That there's a kind of a planting bed with a bunch of red mulch and some sparsely planted vegetation in, in the red mulch bed. No, not that I. There, there are the um, southwest corner of the lot has a planting bed, but it's not red mulch in there and it's not sparsely okay. planted either. All right, all right. I'm, I must have gotten confused, but I, that's what I wrote in my notes for this property. Uh, Karen. I just have one question and it's because I don't know all my plantings yet. Um, is butterfly weed considered a native plant? <laughs> it is I couldn't your... find it. Huh. Yeah, it would normally be just milkweed. Um, it would also fall under, but yes, it is. It's um, very important for monarch butterflies. And Well, I knew that's what it was for, but I, I couldn't find anything that said that that was a native plant. So that's great. Yep. I would, yes. I mean, I would, I guess I don't know a hundred percent if it was officially native, depending on how back, how far back you look in, uh, American history, <laughs> but um, but yes, it is a good plant. It has a good purpose. So, I'm okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. I think people get kind of butterfly bush and butterfly weed confused, and yeah. uh, I always have a hard time remembering which one's good, which one's bad. The butterfly bush can grow rather large. The weeds yeah. are a little more self-contained. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? So we're just going to get a. It sounds like a minor change to. The plan showing a revised contour. But other than that, I didn't hear any. Other requests for changes. So that would suggest that we could go with that to the next work session. Yep, okay. stack them up for the fifth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe okay. we can think of something. Well, we, yeah, we need to start all over with this, I think. Um, no, never mind. Just a joke. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, Send 33 woodcarver knoll to the work session for an order of conditions uh, on January 5th, 2022. Latin second. Roll call vote, Bob. Aye. Janet. Aye. Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye, unfortunately, right? For Nikki. Um, may I ask two questions? Sure. Nikki, how many copies would you like and when would you like them by? Um, two and I don't any time before the fifth. It's, okay. it's such minor by, changes. By Friday? That'd be, yeah, I mean, if you can get it, that'd be great. Okay, and, ju and just two copies? Yep, just two hard copies and then the digital file. We're going to send you the digital. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I was trying to pull up my notes for the next one. Um, 74 Harborview Road, Bruce and Nancy Pearson, map 8A, parcel H4, SE, no SE number. Um, I checked that this morning and there was not one. Construction of a garage addition and new driveway. Good afternoon, David Clark, Clark Engineering. 
uh, on behalf of uh, the Pearsons. Uh, Paul Muldoon is also on the line, who's the architect uh, for the project. Um, as Nikki said, we're, we're looking to put uh, some additions on the upland side of the house. Uh, no work is being proposed on uh, the resource area side of the house with the exception of the installation of mitigation plantings. Um, basically, it's a garage uh, extension uh, towards the street. Uh, most of the work for that garage is extension is, is within the existing driveway. Uh, and we're also doing a little porch bump out um, at the main entrance to the house. Um, I did uh, have some correspondence with Sarah Clark at the building department and we straightened out the uh, zoning issues. There's actually an error in our plan for the building coverage. And uh, once we fix that error, there will be in compliance with the building coverage. Uh, so no uh, zoning board variance will be required. Um, Paul is here to talk about the, the mitigation plantings that are proposed along the bank. Um, but if you have any questions on the site plan, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, good, af good afternoon, Paul Muldoon here, Muldoon Architects. Uh, working with the Pearsons here, uh, again, the, the architecture is, is on the upgrading side of the uh, top of Coastal Bank. Our, our garage expansion is pushing towards the street and a little bit towards the west. On that western side, we're altering a, an existing covered entry just to modify it to make it a little bit larger and then creating a, a roof overhang in that inside L for the, the main entry. Uh, for this, we're, we're reworking some of the existing plantings on that inside L and, and creating more uh, herbaceous areas for, for plantings along the entry walkway. And then on the uh, rear side of the property within the 50, we're removing uh, some, some lawn area to help define the property a little bit against the neighboring property, um, providing um, uh, native plantings in, in that area, and as well as removing a, a brick step and entryway uh, and, and replacing the door with some windows at that 55 square foot area and, and, plant, and adding more plantings in that location. Um, through the process, we've had um, the, the director butter comment on some of the plant selections, uh, specifically the winterberry and um, we're suggesting that we either keep that to a trimmed uh, three to five feet of height or replace it with um, a, a few more Carolina rose uh, species. Um, any particular questions, we're happy to, uh, to answer. So you'd be getting rid of all winterberry and so getting rid of one additional species and just adding an additional uh, I'm sorry, did you say Carolina Rose? Correct. I think we, we had three winter berries uh, located in that eastern side of the um, the property uh, plantings and uh, removing those with, with three, adding in three Carolina Rose. I assume that's a height view type of Correct. issue? Correct. Um, I'm going to, we have a, Mr. Ern, uh, Mr. Jenis, your hand is up if you'd like to say, are you in a butter or, or sorry? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, and my name is Mark Jenis. Uh, my wife, Ann Jenis, and I are the record owners of 86 Harbor View, uh, which is the property that abuts uh, directly to the east. And we were the ones who spoke with the Pearsons uh, last night. Um, and, and Bruce and Nancy Pearson are, are, Pearson are good neighbors and, and good and honorable people. We want to do everything we can to, to, to help them. We don't want to be an undue um, you know, burden and, and delay them in any kind of way. We want to be constructive. Um, but we were concerned that the winter berries uh, might uh, create an impact on our view. Um, I'm not a landscaping expert, so we, we spoke with the person who's landscaping our property, which is Phil Cheney. And I assume you know who he is. And he told us that those winterberry bushes could grow between six to eight feet, and, and that started to concern us. The, the, the reason why I wouldn't want to um, just have this subject to a trim type of arrangement is 
you know, what if the, uh, you know, what if the, the Pearsons no longer own the property? Um, and, uh, you know, I think they want to keep it low for their own sake. But, um, you know, you never know who comes and goes and what kind of neighbors we have. People have different views on things. Um, but if uh, if the winter berries are being replaced with the um, with the lower shrubs, the, the rose, Carolina rose, um, I, don't, I don't know how high those grow, but I think those are much lower. So that sounds like a good solution. Um, but that's, uh, you know, again, we want to be constructive about it. And if that's the solution, you know, we're, we're happy to go along with that as long as the, the height limit is, is um, you know, kept in mind and kept at a reasonable level. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Janessa. Uh, the hand is up for Ann Janess. Do you have a, uh, something you'd like to say as well? Uh, yes. Um, my husband Mark and I went through this process, I don't know, a year and a quarter, year and a half ago. And I just wanted to say that everyone, all of you and our neighbors and us and Bill Cheney and et cetera, worked really hard to try to accommodate everyone and their views, you know, all the neighbors, including those across the street. And I would just hate to see all that work go in vain at this point. Um, and I I didn't catch it last night before we spoke or before Mark spoke with Bruce, but I guess there's another plant by Burnham that's an issue possibly, maybe not for us, but for other people. Um, so I just hope everyone will try to, in the spirit of continuing to accommodate everyone, um, consider all of that. And I agree with what Mark said too. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So uh, I'll open this up for questions, comments from commissioners. Janet. Uh, there are also several, sorry, this is Chris Ely, a, a neighbor. Another At the appropriate neighbor. time, there are several uh, neighbors who would also like to, to join the conversation if, when, it, when it's appropriate, please. Oh, well. We're calling is in, it, we, we weren't able is to, this, we're non, okay. non, 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 uh, we're calling in by phone. That's why. By I phone, right? Speak okay. Up. I'm sorry. Um, is this on the same topic of? of yes, view? exactly. Right. Okay. The same well, yeah. we might as well we might as well hear then. Let's hear your comments as well. Then. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Chris Ely, E L Y, and. Um, I'm Sakja Ely, at 98 Pine Grove Road, on the other side of the Harborview Road, from number 74. And um, what my wife and I uh, would like to comment on are uh, two of the shrub varieties in, in the mitigation area that, have, that uh, Ann and Mark have just talked about, the uh, arrowwood viburnums and the winterberries. Um, these five shrubs, two viburnums and the three winterberries, will block our already very limited view of uh, Nantucket Sound. The uh, arrowwood viburnums are at the street end, as you can see, uh, the north end of the mitigation bed. And as you know, these shrubs are hardy growers, as we have found from uh, our own experience with them and from talking to nurseries and, and from any website. Uh, on Cape Cod, the, uh, these viburnums' growth habit is more than uh, 10 feet, uh, often 15, both in height and width. Uh, and we found uh, also the speed of growth is very fast, usually uh, two feet a year uh, once established. And uh, my wife, uh, the gardener, would also like to comment here, please. Uh, well, I love to garden, and I have a big garden area to play with. And we used to have a few arrowhead, actually arrowwood viburnums on our property. And every year, I had to prune them at least four times during the season. But even doing that, it was almost impossible to keep them lower than six feet. I'm only five feet tall, so I'm quite small. Anyway, also, every year, many suckers come up from the ground, and they spread very fast. Uh, the result is that they gobble up a lot of garden area. And finally, we realized that we just had to take them out, and we did. So my point is that it's really hard to maintain them at a certain height and width. 
uh, one of the websites says that these feisty plants grow really fast, tall, and wide, and that really is true. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, now the other shrubs uh, of great concern are the, the three winterberries that, that you folks have just talked about, and um, it sound, the, the Carolina rose would certainly be a good solution to that. Um, because the winterberries, as you know, have a growth height and width of, say, seven to nine feet, and that would that would completely block our view of the water. So we're very concerned about losing our already small water view um, as a result of these plantings. And in addition, of course, uh, this will materially affect our property value. So we respectfully uh, wish to strongly request that the two viburnums uh, and the three winterberries be replaced with other lower-growing native shrubs, which would offer the same area of mitigation. Uh, we see that um, elsewhere in the mitigation plan, uh, everywhere three foot or so shrubs and perennials are used. So plants of this height could be used instead of these, these five shrubs and have the same uh, overall effect on the coastal bank conservation. So thank you very much for your consideration. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the work you do, and we also uh, uh, love the Pearsons and are, enjoy being neighbors with them, but we just want to have this uh, bless everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. This is um, Chuck Goslin. I live next door to Chris Ely at 77 Harbor Bureau, Goslin, G-O-S-L-I-N. And our two families um, bought or built our houses in the uh, mid 60s and almost 60 years ago and all that time most of my life, um, my life um, we've had we've had the benefit of a um of a view uh of the water and it's classified in our assessment as a partial view and we've paid higher taxes all those years as a result and are happy to pay the higher tax but I think it will be a huge benefit to Chris and I and also for the Genesis if you um, do the mitigation that we recommend at a very minor inconvenience to the Pearsons. It will create some it will also create more value from the town in preserving water views which can be assessed. So um, I think the greatest good for the greatest numbers certainly in doing the mitigation, which is very possible. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, okay, so it sounds like we have at least three neighbors who depend on the subject property for their water view, in addition to the, uh, the owners of the property. So, all right, uh, Janet, uh, you have any thoughts on this? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. There's one. Um, there's one more. Yeah. Another hand just went up. Let me. Is mm -hmm. Mr. Muldoon? Is this also on the same topic? Just to to comment on on uh, the comments on on planting height. Um, the, the Pearsons want to be nothing but neighborly and supportive of, of the neighborhood and um, and really love their neighbors and would be more than willing to reduce the height of the viburnum uh, to, to something more shrub-like and, and lower in, in, in height. Um, so I think we can we can find a, a, a suitable solution to uh, rectify that that issue for the Ely's and, and for the Goslins uh, like like we have with the Genesis. All right, thank you, Mr. Mulding. Um, uh, who first? Uh, Janet, you had your hand up the first, so. Yep, okay, thank you. My hand's up because um, I, I, I don't have any questions on the coverage calculations, on the areas of mitigation, but I've been confused because I, and I think it's a, it's a hard copy versus Dropbox issue. I can't find anywhere on what I've got that specifies any of the plants, which were what I wrote down uh, what are the species and what are the sizes? See, I have that plan. Where is it in there, Nikki? Where? It it's actually hard to find, but I found it. Oh. <laughs> Hang it's on. Only, Where? It's a, plant, it's a plant schedule at the bottom of the. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Okay, I'm sorry, but I took um, it. I, I had a hard time finding it. Oh my goodness, there it is. All right, well, I apologize then. Um, one gallon. Okay. Uh, at any rate, I I guess I have a question for, for Mr. Muldoon, who just said that um, they don't have an issue with 
Did, did I understand you say the height of the viburnum? Are you talking about um, swapping out the viburnum for a lower growing native or having your clients take on the task of, of maintaining uh, a height of the viburnum? Would, uh, we're happy to swap out the vi viburnum ah, for so something better, lower growing. Better solution. Yes. Okay, so it's just the it's just the two viburnums and the three winter berries that are the issue. Is that well? Right. It's the okay. height of the plantings that are the issue. Right. And well, those, those are the only those plantings tend to that grow. we know that create a problem. Right. They just tend. Those are the plantings that have a potential issue because they tend to grow. Okay. I just I think that this is an easily solved problem then to swap them for a great. The way the way I took away what I took away from it was that if nothing grows taller than three feet, everybody would be happy. Yep. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be fine with us too. I mean, strictly speaking, the conservation commission shouldn't normally be involved with maintaining views from abutters, but in this particular case, seems like we were able to. Um, we should be able to arrive at some adequate mitigation if we're sticking with three feet and under um, and also ach achieve that objective. Uh, Nikki, you have your hand up. Yeah, so I just had, um, again, I was going to echo your sentiments that we like native plants and it doesn't necessarily bother us if it's uh, impacting someone's view, but we are sensitive to those issues while it's not in our jurisdiction. Um, but um, my question was, is, are these areas that are outside of the 100 being considered as mitigation in the square footage calculations? Yeah. Excuse me, Paul Muldoon here. Uh, no, uh, we've strictly kept it to the inside of the 100. Okay, I just wanted to make sure for that. Um, and again, I'm fine with switching out plants if the homeowners are fine with that. Um, I definitely prefer having a naturalized mitigation area that never gets touched instead of being pruned for view. So um, that is fine with me. And um, I think that was all I had. All right, thanks, Nikki. Bob? Uh, I had a question uh, about the mitigation area that we we're talking about, uh, uh, Mr. Muldoon. I didn't make it down that far, unfortunately, but down the you know down the uh, property line. But to the to the east and to the south of that proposed mitigation area, um, first of all, is there vegetation, and is the if there is vegetation, is it um, invasive or is it uh, you know, well maintained and so forth. Uh, Paul Muldoon here. The the, the area that's um, designated 485 square feet is a, a manicured lawn area. Um, so we're removing the lawn area um, for a more naturalized uh, planting space. Um, the space designated uh, 55 square feet. Um, there's a current entry in there where we're replacing the door with some windows. So we're we're taking away um, so, some brick. Uh, patio steps into that space along with expanding the, the planting bed to align with the existing planting beds on either side. So removal of, of brick, removal of manicured lawn uh, for a more naturalized planting area. Okay, but to the south of the mitigation area that is outlined, uh, it looks like there's some vegetation there uh, closer to the coastal bank. Would that be invasive vegetation? Did you see? Do you know? Uh, I, I believe there's a, a little bit of uh, invasive species in there, and, and, and part of me, I, I don't know exactly what it is at the moment, um, but it, it tends to stay where it is, and, and the, the, the Pearsons have uh, owned the house for quite some time and, and have never had a, a major issue with that area. Okay, well, I, I would like to propose that uh, we put a mow strip between the two, uh, just so the invasives don't spread into the mitigation planting area. Um, and also to the east uh, along the property line to the Genesis, um, what is on the other side of the property line? Uh, there are there are some uh, mature trees on that side. I do know that there's some sassafras in there. 
Um, I, I don't know the exact species of, of other existing plants that are in that location. Okay. Um, yeah, again, I didn't take a look at it, but um, if there if there is invasive vegetation in that zone too, uh, I'd propose, you know, again, to have at least a mow strip between, you know, along that property line. So the invasives are, are kept at bay and they don't spread into the new plantings. Uh, thank you for that comment, Bob. I had the same same thought. If if you would, Mr. Muldoon, just verify what's next door because it's a long it's a long border, and if there are if it's not maintained on the other side, then that mitigation area will get overtaken pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Mark Janess here. If I could just chime in, we're in the process of our own mitigation because we have, and you folks have, have previously approved our mitigation plan because we're uh, nearing completion of construction on our own property. So we've gone through this process and we will have with Phil Cheney, uh, uh, his guidance will be um, doing the mitigation plan that you folks have already approved. So we've already um, gone through our own process with you all. Is, is that along on the other side of this proposed mitigation area? It, it runs the, the along the coastal bank, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, we're, we're talking about just making sure. I mean, we're asking the applicant's representative to make sure that their proposed mitigation area isn't going to get invaded by anything from an adjacent property. That's all. Understood. All right, um, Ann Janess, do you have a So comment? on the, uh, is this the east side, the long side of the 485 square feet, that's just grass on that side. And then right, all of our mitigation, like uh, Mark was saying, will be along the coastal bank and just a little bit more in the corner of uh, the south, uh, each south corner of our property. Right. So grass is an invasive plant, so sort of what we're talking well, about. We're already approved for that, so. Um, the, the Pearsons okay. will be happy to put a mulch strip between that edge of, of new plantings, the mitigation area, and, and the grass strip of the neighboring property. Um, you're talking about a mulch, a mulching bed, uh, a mulching yes. strip. Yeah, um, you might want to also consider a, a an edging of some kind because grass will, as you know, march through a mulch bed quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a metal edging would slow it down a little bit more. Um, Janet, you're you're muted. You're still muted. <laughs> I thought I hit it. Um, I was just wondering whether it would make more sense to do the mitigation, maybe instead of along that part of the property line, unless it's also being done for screening, where it backs to lawn, but to to use it to enhance the the uh, vegetated buffer strip along the top of the coastal bank, where it might meet up with the uh, mitigation area for the Jeunesse property, to hmm. form one contiguous long nativized area. That's a thought. And maybe it would also be less obstructive to all the various views. I just, that's a question for Paul Muldoon, whether they consider that and if so. Um, in discussions with the, with, uh, the Pearsons, you know, as their family grows and, and, and um, grandchildren are, are in the works and, and, and here, they're hoping to maintain some of the open area behind the house so that they can enjoy space and, and enjoy one their their views and, and their play space. Uh, so pulling the, the plantings closer to the house from the top of Coastal Bank, I think we'd like to avoid that, but it, it's something I'm, I'm happy to talk to them about and see if, if that's something that they could consider. Um, I think we, we like the idea of having some delineation or, or, or definition to the to the property with the mitigation areas that we've shown and and keeping them to a three foot height is something that we're, we're more than happy to do um, metal ledging sure e easy enough um, we're, we're sort of hopeful that we can we can work the plan similar to what we've shown here and and, and have it work for all parties and, and all neighbors 
All right, thank you. you, okay. you um... I'm actually just to, just in response. I'm actually I am looking now at the at the approved mitigation for the Jeunesse property, which does run along the bank, where it meets up with with uh, 74 is not very wide. So it's something I would just ask you to take a look at and see if of it might make more sense from an environmental perspective to continue that naturalized vegetation along there. I agree. It's worth considering, especially because it also allows a long corridor, wildlife corridor between the two properties. Uh, Bob, you have, is that a new hand of yours? Yeah, yeah jog, jogging my uh, recollection now. Uh, when we approved the mitigation at the Genesis property and in, uh, in lieu of a, uh, you know, a, a dedicated um, mitigation planting bed, what we did was we uh, had them uh, remove the invasives along the coastal bank um, and maybe add some uh, native plantings to that area along the DBS uh, there. So that's, I think that's what we did uh, adjacent to this property here. So maybe if that could be done again. All right, so food for thought, uh, Mr. Muldoon. Uh, food for thought. Um, I'd love to take a, a look at the approved plan for the, the Jeunesse property. Um, I'd like to mention the scale of our, our project and, and the amount of coverage that we're, we're concerning is, is uh, far less than, than the Jeunesse project. Um, we're, we're adding a, a, a bay to a garage and, and a little bit of a covered porch overhang. We're, we're hopeful that that is taken into consideration with where our mitigation is happening and, and how we're, we're treating the property. Um, right. Well, I think what what we're asking is just to take another look to see whether there are alternatives. Uh, not, we're not saying this is a, a bad solution. Perhaps there are better solutions. Wonderful. We'll we'll, we'll take a look at the approved Jeunesse plan and plan and converse with our with the Pearsons and um, and and see if there is a a different solution to the one we've presented today. All right. So just to be clear, we aren't seeing a lot of issues with the actual project. It's just where mitigation might be going, trying to appease neighbors, heights of vegetation, that kind and of thing. And demarcation as well. Yeah, I think that's the way it's coming across to me. OK, I just want to make sure that they aren't going to have to revise the garage and the driveway and no, things like that. No, I, I, no one's had any comments, questions about the hardscape and dwelling or the structures. All right, All right. So I guess that um, unless anyone else has any hands raised, which I don't see any, um, sounds like it would be a July 12th. July. Um, uh, <laughs> January. <laughs> no, July. <laughs> yes, January. January 12th. Um, continuance to get a, you know, a consensus of the neighborhood. And if, you know, if the uh, applicants want to do that um, and revise the plan and get that submitted after the new year. Yeah, but just before we go to that, just in thinking about, you know, uh, ideas in terms of rearranging the mitigation, if, if you come back with something like that, if it were, I think you've already, if it were just a narrow vegetative buffer strip all along the coastal bank, there might be of limited ecological value. Perhaps if you had a clump at either corner of the, of the bank, I don't know, but whatever, it, it, it just, I do want to caution you against coming back with a proposal with a very thin VBS vegetative buffer, buffer strip. Sometimes that can be of less value. It's better, I think, in, in general to have it sort of larger portions, or let's just say two portions, where they can withstand the onslaught of invasives and, and other wares. Uh, understood. And I, 
that was part of our thinking and in, in placing it in the in the location that it is, or at least the, the larger clump. Um, we, we didn't want it to in, intermingle with anything happening on the top of the bank, and, um, and again, creating some sort of definition to the rear yard while maintaining an open area of space for for just general use. Right. Um, from a, a, a lot coverage and, and ratio perspective, are, are, are the mitigation uh, numbers in tune with, with your liking? So, so we're maintaining the particular square footage and, and just rearranging plantings? Right. And is, is that something that we could potentially discuss in, in a work session versus continuing to the next hearing, uh, assuming that we have time to converse with the neighbors and, and, and be consistent with our, our plan going forward? Um, that's a good question. Nikki, you have thoughts on that? That's, I know we're, we're loading up that uh, work session. Yeah, it's, it's starting to get too full to start having conversations on plans. Um, you know, it's really supposed to just be conversations on the order. And if we have more questions on the plans and that kind of thing, I just I don't want to overload it too much. Um, so I would definitely prefer the 12th. It's I mean, the applicant has to agree to that. Um, but yes, work sessions are generally just for trying to, you know, do the quick things, the COCs, the orders. And we already have, you know, I mean, we're coming up on 10 orders, so I don't really want to be discussing plan changes yeah, as well. That's t that's a lot. Well, in that case, uh, requesting a continuance to the January 12th hearing, please. Appreciate, appreciate it. We would like to make a motion that we continue 74 Harborview Road to January 12th, 2022. Latin second. We'll call vote Bob. Aye. Janet. Aye. Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye. Thanks. Thank you all for uh, your input, and we'll see you on the 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our final order is 36, 74, and 77 Sears Road, Patrick Brogan and Patricia J. Black, map 11A, parcel 510, and 310B, and 411, SC 103522, demo of a single family dwelling and construction of a pool and accessory dwelling or buildings. Good afternoon, Sean Riley, Coastal Engineering, representing the applicant. Uh, with me is Seth Wilkinson from Wilkinson Ecological. Uh, just to give you a little background and history of how we got here today, the um, property at 74 and 77 has two open orders of conditions that um, started back in 2012. The uh, site is currently under construction and uh, was approved with uh, Dave Clark, Clark Engineering. Can I share my screen? Uh, yes, let me give you, uh, do I need to give you permission? I think you can just take it at this point since you've released it. It's asking me. Uh, it's not allowing me to share. Hmm. All right, all right. Um, if you want to just pull that the plan back up, we'll we'll go with that one. All right, um, I'll try and work on letting you share. Yep. So the um, the applicants purchased um, 36 Sears Point Road last year, uh, and we've been working with them uh, over the last uh, six months or so to develop a plan to um, deconstruct the existing dwelling uh, that's on the property to remove the existing guest house and pool area that's on that property uh, and also to remove the uh, paved driveway uh, from that property. So the plan that you have before you uh, that you see on the screen uh, shows the uh, areas on 77 and 74 that were uh, previously approved through the two uh, orders of conditions that are um, currently open with uh, revisions to primarily the 
the driveway access on 74 and 77, uh, just some minor reconfigurations of that driveway, um, mostly the, the loop um, that is shown. Let me just move this out of the way. Um, the loop that's shown in green, uh, accessing the upper parking area. Uh, we've also included some drainage structures uh, that weren't in the previous design uh, to pick up any of that, uh, the parking courtyard that's uh, mostly outside of uh, the 100 foot buffer to prevent any of the runoff from, from running down those uh, P-stone channels, uh, the driveway tracks. On 36, as I said uh, previously, the um, main house that is within the zero to 50 foot buffer to the coastal bank is to be deconstructed and reduced to about a third of the size um, and more than three quarters of the volume of what's out there now. Uh, I know if Thad's on the line, he's probably kicking himself because he, it took him five or six hearings just to get this approved with tens of, tens of thousands of square feet of mitigation uh, to build this structure uh, over the last several years. And here we are uh, with an applicant that's coming in with something that uh, you rarely see to voluntarily remove a structure that could, uh, could never be built again um, should they wanna come back uh, and rebuild it in the same footprint. The result of this project is a reduction of more than 2,400 square feet of building, deck, uh, patio space, and a paved driveway within the zero to 50 foot buffer. And we have an overall net reduction of coverage uh, between the three different properties, 36, 74, and 77. Also, as part of this application, we're proposing to remove an additional 790 square feet of lawn within the zero to 50 foot buffer and install uh, native planted plantings within that area. I think this is a pretty straightforward project uh, that I'm hoping uh, can be a, a easily approved. Um, and with that, I'll open up to any questions you may have. Thank you, Sean. Actually, I don't think any project this uh, this scope can be considered straightforward, but uh, we'll do our best. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm just going to open it up because I think we all have a few. We all have questions and comments. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. Right, I'll start then. The, um, the the one thing that well, one thing that struck me when I we were at the site visit, and I think I even mentioned at the site visit, is that for 36, the property in 36 along the top of the coastal bank, I would have expected to have seen a vegetative buffer strip, which is something that's specifically called out and and uh, in the Chatham conservation regulations. And um, so anyway, I, I'd enjoy a discussion on on that. Why why couldn't there be, shouldn't there be, and so forth. Okay, um, could we just save that until um, with Jared, I've got Jared, uh, actually Seth Wilkinson on the line um, and he can review the mitigation planting plan. Uh, are there any, I guess, any other questions that we could address before we get over to the, the mitigation? Oh, I see, just on your part of it, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I, my questions are, yeah, I, I guess it doesn't look like we have any, any questions in the queue right now for the hardscape and structure part. My guess is they're gonna be concentrated on the mitigation, mitigation part. Sure. So and with that, I'll let uh, Seth take over and walk you through the mitigation uh, planting plan. Or Sean, if you want to just put that that diagram up, if that's easier, flash it there. Yeah, um, happy to just let you control it. Probably do a better job than I will. Um, for the record, Seth Wilkinson, Wilkinson Ecological. Um, it, it's not every day that you see a, a an applicant acquiring neighbor's property and and then you get the benefit of sort of re, um, redesigning the mitigation um, to to provide uh, 
a, a great sort of um, contiguous connection for wildlife, uh, as well as all the other myriad of, of benefits that mitigation provides. Um, but it is a little confusing. So we thought this diagram would be helpful. There's no new information here. This just helps you to, to describe, it helps you to understand the two prior um, orders, which which uh, are listed there as uh, 2797 and 3418. Um, so this is just sort of uh, lay of the land, sort of existing conditions. That's the, the mitigation approved to date on the first page. And then we could go to the second page. Um, the areas that are, are shown in gray here on the second page, There we go, um, which which don't jump out tremendously, but uh, in the bottom left uh, of 74 there, you can see there's a, a a gray scale just above the, there we go, that's a little better, um, above the uh, 2797, um, there's a slight, we're, we're sort of pulling some of that mitigation uh, back uh, out of the 50 to 100, out of the aura, um, and it's mostly being relocated into the uh, the NDZ. Um, we'll show that in the next uh, the next slide. There's a couple of other little little bumps and ridges that are 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 being uh, moved slightly along the side um, near the path, and then up near the building, just to give it a little bit more space from the building and a little ease of, of walking around. Um, and then if we go to the the third page, it'll sort of pull it all together. Nope final page of this diagram. So the area in blue is demonstrating where the, the new mitigation is going. Um, and this is exclusively into existing lawn areas. Um, so uh, we're adding uh, at the bottom of the page, uh, we're adding uh, a considerable amount of additional mitigation um, in the NDZ on number 77. Um, and then also uh, moving along the side. And then if you scroll down a little bit, Sean, um, there's some additional mitigation to link up. Um, go up towards the guest house. A little more. Yeah, you've got some additional mitigation by the guest house. Uh, it's naturalized areas beyond that to to on the wetland side of that that little blue uh, uh, segment at the top, uh, the north end of the page. So we're sort of linking up and providing additional buffer um, at that point. Um, that that is that is within the aura at that location because the NDC is fully vegetated over there. Um, so that's sort of the realignment uh, of the mitigation. Um, and and then when we, and I think it's a it's a net benefit, it's a net increase uh, both in coverage by about 800 square feet. And it's also there's a shift from the aura to the NDZ, uh, so the the sort of the usable areas of the of number 77 are being consolidated uh, either completely outside the jurisdiction or at least in the aura rather than the NDZ, um, which I think is beneficial with uh, re redeveloped properties such as this, which typically have extensive development within the NDZ. Um, as far as maybe you just scroll down so we can get that little sliver on uh, 36, Sean, um, to address uh, Chairman's question, um, the, the certainly the expectations of the of the clients were that we are, um, you know, we're going to do a net reduction on the property. Uh, we're going to make, you know, remove one of the dwellings, remove the pool, um, and just put in a, a tennis court and a and a much smaller single dwelling. Um, and so I think the expectation was that would be a, a significant, you know, benefit for the environment. Um, the other aspect of that is there, there, there already this this property, as Sean mentioned, was restored um, probably eight years ago, roughly. You know, we did the design for that, helped with the uh, implementation of it, um, and and there there was, you know, a, a a significant amount of approved lawn in that location, but I think that was approved um, in consideration of of existing. This is a historically uh, developed property um, and there was considerable amount of mitigation which is all still there um, so in many respects the medic that while well, there's there's not the 25 foot uh, contiguous uh, buffer strip in the NDZ there is a considerable amount of, of mitigation already in place and there didn't really seem to be anything else to mitigate the project was essentially mitigation into itself because it's a net reduction of uh, 
considerable net reduction of um, coverage. So, uh, pretty pretty limited proposals on 36 at the moment. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, and you 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 will have some from Janet. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Okay. So, Seth, when you one is walking in the existing lawn area behind uh, 36, and you see the the demarcation of the mitigation area, um, is that where does that exist? It's not on the plan, so I'm trying to understand. Are you saying that 25 foot VBS? Is, is there, so those boulders are marking the outside edge of the VBS and you are still 25 feet away from the top of the bank at that point? No, what I was saying was there, there uh, I, I believe that the 25 foot uh, VBS was, was part of the regulations when this was developed previously. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know exactly what year that came in, but, but that that was basically the development for this project was, um, uh, arbitrated with conservation some time back and a certificate of compliance was issued when it was found to be in compliance just uh, I believe a few months ago. Um, so given that there really wasn't any, the, the, all that's being requested is a net reduction in coverage. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 think this, the thinking was that uh, the project was sort of mitigation into itself because it's a reduction rather than an expansion. Okay, so that demarcation area is actually um because i what i didn't do was was notice where that lines up with the stake for the top of the coastal bank they're essentially the same line so the demarcation is, is is showing the top of the bank where the mitigate where the planting was done is that the uh yeah the edge the, so the top of the coastal bank uh does not coincide with the edge of lawn i think the uh that hay bale line is 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 uh is fairly close to the edge of the lawn um there there i think sean's plan may may show that better. This is really just a diagram here. Yeah. yeah. So I can I can address that. So you are you are correct, Janet. The um, the top of the coastal bank now uh, is right at that limit of uh, the, the mitigation, that 25 foot uh, mitigation strip that was provided for the construction of, of this house. OK. Now I see that on that thing. OK, thank you. I get that. Um, why is the um, Seth, I, I think you explained it, but uh, it, it it failed me. The little the little tiny strip that comes in from 74 and 77 across to the southeastern edge of 36. Why is is that part of the new mitigation? Is uh, yeah, that was really just a linkage. So there wasn't uh, a really abrupt uh, change between the two properties that links up to the existing uh, buffer strip. Okay, so that's and 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 what that new strip is bordering is existing mitigation. Yes. yes. Okay, got that. I thought that's what the case was, and similarly, the the new mitigation that's proposed to the north of the guest house, um, you're only showing it within the jurisdictional area. I get that, but I'm wondering if if in reality, on the ground, it's going to be separated by lawn area the way it's shown on the on the plan, like an arrow going through the middle of it, or is yeah, just because yeah, that's yeah. My my guess is it will, it will not take that form uh, at its final um, implementation. Um, but I, I, you know, every every town tends to be a little different. A lot of times, we're told, you know, don't commit things that we. Can't I know right. we would say to you, why are you showing us something that's out of jurisdiction? It doesn't count. So but. yeah, we're just sort of trying to stick to the jurisdictional areas. But uh, but yeah, I, I completely agree with you. That would be a pretty odd. Uh, it would be very so weird. So it'll all be likely get filled in with mitigation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to hear that. Let's talk about the English oak on. 74 and 77. Um, I saw the Bartlett um, report. Um, I'm going to give it a, a try to pronouncing phytophthora. Um, phytophthora. 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 Got it. So it's a it's a fungus that exists in the wet soils that exist, and I know that they're wet over on uh, 36. I didn't realize it was quite so wet because this this area is much higher. Um, but that tree is in significant decline. 
Yes, yeah, we 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 took a look at that. Um, I mean, English oak isn't our favorite species at at Wilkins Necological. It, some areas. That recently, yes, we had. To. Yeah, you've heard that uh, from Katrine recently. Um, I, I find I, I sort of like all oaks personally, just speaking for myself. Um, and I find English oak to be a bit of a heartbreaker because oftentimes when it really does get reach full maturity, that's when the Phytophthora really uh, takes takes hold, and you'll see these big black uh, cankers opening up, and and this black fluid runs out of it, and that's that's the beginning of the end, you know, for the tree. Um, and knowing that it's already it's already you know it doesn't happen in every site certainly. There's there's many many places where that doesn't happen, but with Bartlett. Uh, identifying it at this site, uh, you know, our concern is this is never going to be a healthy full canopied oak. Whereas um, the the white oaks that we have proposed, we we think you know could um, be be quite quite healthy okay. and higher value. Well, okay, so um, let's talk about that as replacement. Um, in the in the I guess it was the uh, the filing for the previous filing for 74 and 77 identified that as having a 24 inch DBH. So that's a pretty significantly large tree. And it's being replaced by, how, what is the replacement ratio? Uh, three, three to three and a half inch caliper, which is about as big as we like to plant trees. Yep. Uh, yep. The tree. How many of those? Uh, three, sorry, three. Uh, I'm sorry, four, four swamp white oak, um, three to three and a half inch caliper. But those four swamp whites are going, are, are in uh, compensation for the loss of three English oaks, correct? There's two other English oaks that are coming out where the tennis court is going in on number 36. Correct, there's or two, so yep. Only suffering from, I'm not gonna say it, Never mind. But similarly have the same condition, phytothorf. By top three. By Tothera. I mean, who puts pH and th together in a row? In a word, any mind. The Latin. The Latin. The Latin. Is it Latin or Greek? <laughs> I guess. Anyway, so there's a total of, and they're they're also a significant size. So I guess where I'm just just going with this, I get that white oaks are a much better choice um, for these soil conditions. Um, we have three large specimens coming out and are being replaced by four smaller, much smaller ones. So I think what I'm asking is if you could bump that to a two to one ratio and put in, find a space for two more white oaks. We could probably do that. We've got a pretty extensive site here. Um, happy to happy to talk to the applicants, but I, I think they would be willing to do that. Great, that would make me happier, at least to see a two to one for the, for the loss of, I mean, this is the same conversation we had with Katrine, which is that at, this, at the size that they are, they're performing a a pretty wide variety of ecosystem services, even if they're sick and in decline. So we're trying to to match up some of those services and and prepare for the future. So a two to one would be would be appropriate for that. Okay, um, that's all I have for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. So Bob, quickly before I leave, um, I just want to address the. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if you could take over for me with these uh, questions, Bob. But uh, Seth, uh, there's some temporary irrigation behind uh, the newly purchased uh, dwelling along the uh, boulders. Wondering if that's gonna be coming out. Uh, secondly, wondering if uh, the turf areas within the 50 are gonna be um, non-irrigated. And lastly, <laughs> Uh, wondering if uh, the boulders um, along the newly purchased mitigation area, uh, w wonder if that um, uh, delinea de delineation will continue throughout the whole project just to kind of, uh, you know, bring everything together. But I have to leave. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I'll, I'll, I'll drive those uh, for you. The, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding which boulders we're talking about. This is on so number a, 36. Yeah, there's a row, Seth, that, that delineates where the mitigation ends and the lawn begins. There's a row of right. rocks that um, that uh, that line that, that edge mm -hmm. of lawn. And, and to answer that question, yes, they would stay there. I think Bob was asking whether they could be extended into the other end to 74, 76. Is that what you're saying, Bob? If he's still here? No, he's gone. That's what I thought he said. I thought I thought that's what he was driving at, but 
Yeah, we get, and, and it's typical for conservation to want the the uh, demarcation, either a, a, a short uh, split rail fence or uh, mar uh, permanent markers. So we we have no problem adding that to the to the plan. All right. So the other things that he mentioned, the existing irrigation. I think he was talking about. There was a large black um, hose that's for the irrigation that ran along those boulders behind 36. That's mm -hmm. what he's talking about. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, so the, um, I mean, those plants are, I think, well established now that they they do not need irrigation at this point. So that could be removed. Um, yeah, that was uh, you know, typically three years is sufficient and those plants have been in for longer than that. So um, that shouldn't be an issue. I, I believe there is a lawn irrigation system in in 36 which which i believe the owners are hoping to it'll be watering less lawn but um i think they're hoping to preserve that they're not asking for any new irrigation right so this would be this is uh, a lot of bob's questions were kind of more of myself doing research and combining all the orders and um figuring out all the conditions that were placed on the projects and the amendments. So um, I already have Crystal on that, gathering everything. And then it's so, you're, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of research to make sure we get everything all absorbed into one thing. Um, but irrigation will definitely be one of them. Um, it will definitely state no, no additional irrigation um, than what is already in existence and then they'll be the temporary for you know growing seasons understood during yeah, that research during that research nikki I, I hope you look to see whether or not in ground are you talking about in, in ground irrigation um no, no i think know. bob was bob yeah, said so temporary. there's it sounds like there's two types of irrigation there's the the, the tubes that were they're along the top of bank on 36 showing but what I thought I heard someone say is that there's also in-ground irrigation that the applicant wants to keep. Yeah, I so I would I would uh, I would separate them as uh, the temporary uh, irrigation for the restoration plants. Um, that is no longer needed at this point. Um, we we would be looking to in install that uh, primarily on 77 um, and that small sliver where there's new plantings proposed on 36, but only for a period of. Up, up to three years, after which point it would be removed. Um, and we believe there's an existing subsurface irrigation system uh, in the uh, turf areas on 36, uh, which which the applicant is not looking to expand, but would, would like to preserve. Well, the, the question for me then, Nikki, is whenever you're doing a research on 36, and I'm talking about the, the previous NOI, is whether or not that was discussed, whether or not in-ground irrigation and turf lawn within the resource area was addressed and was was allowed to stay. If it was not allowed right. to stay, then it shouldn't be there in the first place and it would obviously have to come out. So we have to start from what was approved. Yeah, so generally <laughs> it will say that existing irrigation is allowed to stay, so I'll look for that. Um, but that also brings up the question that Chatham is currently not allowing I'm not sure if this is a town water or a well situation for the irrigation, but um, I mean, if, if it's on town water, they're not allowed to irrigate any longer. So that would need to be addressed as well. Thank you. There is an irrigation well uh, for the existing okay. irrigation system. All right, so I'll look back at the past NOIs and see if um, existing irrigation was mentioned. If not, it may need to come out, but uh, we'll come to that when uh, we need to. Because that was roughly 10 years ago, that project, I believe, was finished. Yeah. So right. it's, it's a contemporary project. It's something that you can't say is grandfathered. Right. I, I guess I would just note that the certificate of compliance was earlier this year, and certainly nothing's been installed since then. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Um, all right, who else is wanting to say anything here? I, I want to go back 
since I don't see a hand up, back to the VBS, just to make sure I understand it. It sounds like Janet understands, but just so that I understand, you're, you're, you're saying, Seth, that there is a VBS behind 36. That, that yes. exists between the top of the coastal bank and the lawn area. Correct. I, okay. I don't, I don't, what I couldn't say for sure is if that coastal bank has moved in the last 10 years, I would be surprised if it had, uh, other than for maybe flood, floodplain uh, um, may have, may have moved it. Because there's certainly been a flood, an update to the flood maps. Um, but, but that, that was, uh, that was incorporated uh, about 10 years ago. Yeah. So similarly, Nikki, when you're looking at back, back in time at 36, if you could notice whether or not a VBS was specifically called for. And in addition, whether or not, uh, you know, it appears to be there's turf lawn there at the top of the coastal bank and whether that was discussed. Uh, you tell me, Seth, is that, is that, would you consider that to be turf lawn there or uh, a native fescue type of situation? It, it does look to be the fescue. Uh, I mean, I would okay. call it fes fescue based turf. <laughs> fescue based uh, turf. <laughs> you know, we, we, there is a, I mean, one of the I most knew, aggressive. I, Progressive turf you can put in right now. Is <laughs> That's a new nomenclature for me, but <laughs> we'll go for that. Yeah. All right. Um, um, I'm thinking maybe an option would be to call out where the boulders are compared to the top of Coastal Bank. Yeah. Yeah, just to sort of figure out whether what was approved there is what is there. And we can start from that point in time. Um, and I don't, I don't recall if Nikki was came in just before, just after the certificate of compliance was issued for this, because I think that was uh, what was looked into in detail as part of the certificate of compliance uh, that was within, I believe, the last six or nine months. Yeah. So I think I came in right after I came in for a pre-construction meeting and was, you know, surprised that they were tearing down part of the building. Um, so I think that's what I came in for, not the certificate of compliance. I think that's right. Seth. Unfortunately. <laughs> hey, Seth. Yes. This is uh, Mr. Brogan. Hello. Hi, how are you? All of these conditions were met prior to closing on the property with conservation. It was a contingency upon closing. So all of the violations and all of the conditions that Rogers had were recertified by conservation prior to closing. And we haven't made any modifications since. Great. So Mike Ford should be prepared to comment on that, but that was a condition upon acquisition. Um, can you just, um, for so my we should have legal knowledge, what that. was the closing? Yeah, absolutely, closing 100%. So we're looking for Mike now, but that's very important because I've been in Chatham a long time and very aware of conservation and the rules. and this was a big sticking point. So we were, and I know Rogers was not necessarily in the best graces given past behavior. So um, we were very diligent about that. So, so Patrick, Patrick, uh, while we have Mike here. answer that question. Yep. Um, Mr. Just, Chairman, uh, yes, Mike Ford Mike. on the line. Um, yeah, I had my hand up. So what Mr. Brogan is saying is correct. That was a condition of uh, the acquisition of 36. And I represented Mr. Brogan and appeared before uh, the commission. And uh, it, it took a series of meetings and the commission looked at all of the past orders of conditions and um, signed off uh, with a certificate of compliance, uh, which was the basis on which the Brogans went ahead and purchased the property. Understood. Uh, I still think we, for informational purposes, just want to go back and try to figure out what was approved, what's there, and yes, it could be that it's all moot because it was uh, signed off on, I agree. Well, but it's not a question it could be, Mr. Chairman. It, it's a question of whether or not the commission is going to look behind issued, uh, duly issued certificates of compliance. Um, you've got a representation by the, the new owner that they've done nothing uh, to change anything. I mean, I could see if there was indications out there on the ground that something had been done, but simply to go back and say, well, you know, we did issue a certificate of compliance, but maybe we want to go back and look at everything again. No, no, we don't want to open up um, 
anything that was certified by a certificate of compliance. I have no, okay. I'm not suggesting Thank that. You. No, Thank it's you. just, it's honestly, it's going, it's just due di diligence on my part to catch up on this property, gather the whole thing, see what needs to be included in the new order of conditions. So it's just going to be kind of working between um, all parties to make sure we get the right order issued and make sure that everything, everyone is happy with what's being reissued since we're closing orders that have started but are technically not, you know, finished. So that's just the, the tricky part. I just want to make sure I catch everything in the new order. Um, so that's Understood. just going to be it. Understood. And I realize the orders with respect to 7477 are still outstanding. So it's very important that all of those conditions be brought forward. And so uh, understood, Nikki. Okay. So, we'll, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll communicate well back and forth before we start processing the order. Um, I don't know if there's any rush. I don't necessarily want this on January 5th, uh, assuming that people don't want revisions, because I'd kind of like to have the time to really hash it out with, um, not hash it out, but um, to really organize it and make sure that we're not missing anything on all parties. So I would, you know, like to go to the February work session. I don't know how big of a rush you're in. Pending any revisions that the commission wants as well. Mr. Chairman, if I could respond to the timing issue, this sure, is my yeah. right. yes. So. I anticipate we'll be before the Board of Appeals um, the second meeting in, in January. We need to go to the Board of Appeals because uh, there is a special permit that authorized the big house. And while um, um, the building coverage is, is going from over 10% down to about 4.5% on this lot, uh, we still need, um, because of where it exists in the Conservancy District, a modification of that permit or a new special permit. So we have a zoning stop. Um, in January as as well. So if we can kind of proceed parallel, um, that would work great, Nikki. Uh, what does that mean in practical terms, uh, Mr. Ford? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the options are. Is there a meeting in late January before the commission that this could get put over to? I'm certainly not looking for January 5th. Sounds like January uh, we have 12th. January 12th and we have 12th. January 20 something. Well, January 12th, I'd suggest, Mr. Chairman, if you can accommodate it, would be a good one because uh, obviously the the Board of Appeals likes to know that um, the Commission is is thinking that they might be able to issue a, a an order um, or properly condition the project. So January. So that would be 12th. just to make sure plans are acceptable. Everything's been revised. And we are planning on issue, issuing a um, order in February, the first meeting in February. Right. So that 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 look back on January 12th, so we know everything is in order, would be great. And then then the actual order conditions could could issue subsequent. Yes, that's I agree with that. And that, that would give be, you time, Nikki. I'm sorry. That would give Nikki you time to do the due diligence that you were talking about for, for all three of these properties? I think so. I mean, not not for necessarily the January 12th, but the order wouldn't be voted on until the first meeting, the work session in February. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think of due diligence as, as, as should be done by the 12th. Um, because that that way we, that way we know whether there are any issues that we haven't addressed so far. I think between Mike, Sean, and myself and Crystal, I think we can get that done. Okay. Be glad yeah, to we'll, we'll we'll certainly work with your staff on that, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, yeah, I, I I just wanted to echo. Let's see. I just wanted to echo. Uh, are there two hands? One from Mike Ford, one for Sean. Those are pre-existing hands that are no longer up. Or just my uh, hand, 
my my hand. This is Mike Ford. Is pre-existing, not non-conforming. Pre <laughs> uh, through the chair, I, since we have the applicant on, um, I, I, you know, I just want to clarify that he is fine with the uh, two to one on the tree um, that Janet brought. So we'll yeah. we'll add that to the plan. Yeah, and I, I was going to say I echo Janet's thoughts on that. It's those are actually I'm a little confused. Uh, the I thought you said that uh, the the plan I thought said that there were three English oaks, but you said there were. Four. Four. No, three. she said there were three. 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 Okay. So there are three. We have we have proposed four uh, swamp white swamp white oak and four red maple altogether, as well as three service berry. That's what's on our plan presently. And my understanding was uh, that we were looking to take the uh, total re tree replacement uh, up to uh, two to one. Um, I think that means we just need two more oaks. Yep. Two more oaks is what. Right. Okay. Yep. And all those trees are offered in mitigation for the removal of the, of the English oaks? Yes, there's the two English oaks in the proposed tennis court, and then there's one in the uh, access for the uh, main dwelling on 77. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I. I think a rule of thumb that I, at least I've been working towards and maybe others on the commission is when you take out large trees, you take a look at the DBH and you replace uh, basically equivalent DBH. Anyway, that's what's I think driving this. Okay. Uh, anything else from anyone? I see nothing, so. We're talking. It looks like we're talking primarily about getting our ducks in order with the, with all the many, many, many documents that exist for all three of these properties, and then also more mitigation for the removal of those English oaks. I still have a question about the VBS, but we'll whenever we see what was already there, I, I, my concerns may be put to rest. All right. So we're continuing to. The 12th. So I'll do it. I'll, I'll make a motion to continue uh, 36, 74, and 77 Sears Road to January the 12th. Latin second. Roll call vote. Janet. Aye. Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you all. See you on the 12th. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, we are winding down with just minutes. Um, we have September 23rd, 2020. Um, that 2020. We found was, <laughs> yes, that we couldn't find any drafts. Oh, or is that? Anywhere. That's so why it looks so remembering weird. Those. <laughs> December 1st and November 10th of this year. I'm, 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 well, that's, <laughs> that kind of answers the question and, and brings up another one because I didn't notice it was 2020, and I was like, the the the, the minutes are not complete. There's nothing. Right. That, there's no attendance record. There's no who was there, and then about halfway through, it just lists things without any discussion de description of what happened. The boat. It, are you going off Mine Town Gov or the Dropbox? Dropbox. Hmm. Yeah, it's the same that um, I saw where there's it's yeah. just lists the NOIs it's with no discussion. Just lists and doesn't say anything. So we do have an issue with auto saving with Teams and our computers and Dropbox and um, all that kind of thing. So I didn't notice that. So the wrong hmm. one could have been uploaded uh -huh. if um, it had been auto saved. And Crystal has the actual copy on her computer or something like that. So okay. um, we don't have to vote on that one if it seems very incomplete. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't look right. Something's wrong. And they also, it wasn't. I think it's. It seems like it was started by someone else, and maybe that could have been the issue. Maybe it was started, and Crystal found a started version, but it wasn't ever completed. So 
um, because that was obviously before both of us. Yeah. But the December 1st and November 10th ones should be. Um, They're fine. They looked better. Okay. Yeah. And whoever did whoever did November 10th, I I thought it was brilliant. I mean, it was almost as good as watching the tape. It was very uh, comprehensive. Oh, good. I believe that was Crystal. So yeah. she'll appreciate any, that. I had no well, then she's got to. she's got the job then from now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it. <laughs> this is a rule of government where if you do a good it job is. or something, it's yours for life. Yep. And <laughs> minutes are so tedious. <laughs> um, Did anybody have anything on the, on either not, one of them? Nothing substance. I just had a minor top. It's been really not even worth mentioning. Okay. Uh, Bob D did send a couple changes um, that she'll incorporate. Okay. Before and I'm not going to send you anything, Nikki, because uh, I had no changes on either one of them. So nobody's chiming in. So yeah, I look good. Nothing to send. So we'll just vote on only the first and tenth. Yeah, no, December first, November tenth. All right, I'll do it. I'll make a motion that we oh, approve we, the minutes for. We, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Did we? Did we look? Did we cover the first? Um, oh, I had them both up on my screen together. Oh, you had them. Oh, you, you thought we were talking about both of them at the same time. Okay, I, I didn't under, have that understanding. So never mind. Let's go. We can look at the first. I don't have anything on any of that either. I don't think I'm looking. I'm scrolling through, and um, I don't think I do either. So okay, belay my objection. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, on that, I will make a motion that we approve the minutes for November 10th, 2021 and December 1st, 2021. Latin second. Uh, roll call vote, Janet. Aye. Uh, Karen. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I vote aye, and those are approved. All right. Any I other? Just, um, I just sent you guys when I, we were listening. We were talking. I found the the COC application for 36 uh, Sears Road, which is pretty interesting reading. <laughs> so the boulders are not demarcating a mitigation area. They're just uh, separating the coastal bank from the lawn, and there's no. It doesn't seem to be any in ground irrigation. So anyway, it's interesting reading. Yes. Bad yes. did that one. So tells you more about what happened there. Some background. Yeah, I had the feeling they were marking the bank and not mitigation yeah. from when we were out there. It looked like that was a clear top of coastal banks. So it certainly we'll did because it drops right off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it does. It's yeah. it's pretty clear. Yeah. Sorry, so. Bob. <laughs> no, it's it's no VBS there. No VBS, no. It so didn't. now it's just to have to look at the order to see whether the order said anything. I mean, we, but I think I think Mike Ford's right. We can't uh, go back. Yeah, we can't open. We can't open the box up. But it's too bad. Nope. nope. And uh, just it sort of speaks to speaks to how we need to, you know, check all the boxes before we before we sign off. Right, because we're sticking some future commission with it. Like us. <laughs> like us. <laughs> Uh, let's don't pay this one forward. <laughs> All right. So I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, good idea. You don't keep made. <laughs> Happy holidays. See you guys. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on. Oh, Karen, wait. Karen has oh, to Oh, raise do your hands if you oh. want to adjourn. Oh, second. <laughs> Seconded. Yes. I'll, I'll, let's, do a, let's do a raise yeah, of hands. In favor. All right. We're done. So All right, thank quickly, you. before we go, before while well, I've got while well, I've got Karen, Mary, and Nikki. Um, yes. Uh, next channel, eight, just real quick. Channel 18, you can stop recording. This is yeah. just. Thank you. Yeah. This is just scheduling. Uh, I, I can't stop until you adjourn. Thank you. Oh, oh. we adjourned. We adjourned. We adjourned. 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 adjourned.